building and see if you can spot where the bad guy comes from. What was he doing back there? Was he sleeping behind the crates when they walked in? Hey, the position of the crates and the barrels is completely inconsistent between shots. And where'd the other dead body go? I guess it is a video game. Bodies just vanish. Or explode. So they get through to the end and they try to convert the station, which is good because the station does things. When they get jumped by another orc, who can apparently reproduce by mitosis. I really have no idea what's going on now. Um, Drexel takes over a bunch of satellites and starts shooting science beams all over the world, which makes things shake and light fixtures flicker somewhat in some place somewhere. Drexel is converting all digitally stored data into Dagon 12 energy pulses. Ah, that would be terrible probably if I knew what in the hell that was. How the hell can it store that much? Drexel is the first of its kind to convert data directly into holographic plates. His capacity for learning is virtually unlimited. What in God's holy name are you blathering about? Steve finally manages to kill all the orcs, which allows Yasmin to put a thing in a thing which stops Drexel's laser thing somehow. And then she just shoots it, which probably would have been faster to just try first. And then Steve goes to another place, which has an identical market in front of it, and he just keeps getting into laser fights, which... You know, there's no tension here. We're watching someone play a lousy video game. He keeps getting shot, but is he in trouble? How much trouble? Is he close to dying? And if he were, how would we tell? Just how many shots can he take? You know what's worse than playing a shitty Sega CD game? Watching someone else play a shitty Sega CD game. Drexel would actually replace us with androids. Androids with robotic penis hoses. We gotta get Drexel. Word here says the scabs ride a Drexel. Can I say, good job, you guys. Oh man, that guy died, not him. Now he's never gonna be able to explain what was up with that dumbass fist pump thing he just did. Good job, you guys. Godwin's dead, Wolf. He was the control group in my test of maximum surge. You're taking 12 at work. Damn, you're ugly. Quite the shock, wouldn't you say? All right, so let me just get this straight. You give Walter Koenig top billing, dude's a good actor, Star Trek Babylon 5, classic actor. And then you proceed to dub over every single one of his lines with some shitty child actor. I mean, look, I know this is not exactly a role with a lot of dignity, it's probably not on Walter's resume, dude's got a fucking hose coming out of his neck, but come on, guys! You just wasted this dude, fuck you! Japan has gone dark. Uh, no, that would be Australia. Zen. She's escaping! Impossible! If only we police officers were issued some sort of handcuffing device made of metal to more efficiently restrain prisoners' hands! Okay, hold on, foul! What the hell? You're telling me that Elaine, Elaine, just forced the doors open to the lab by herself, barehanded. You're telling me that if Steve had even managed to put the slightest effort into escaping, he could have just walked out the fucking room and the movie would be over by now. Jesus Christ. Can she do anything to Drexel from in there? Nothing can stop Drexel now. Nothing can stop Tord. There's no answer, sir. I hate meddling women. You do realize you just said that out loud just now, right? I mean, what are you, a Scooby-Doo villain? I hate meddling women. Pinkerton, get out there and kill that bitch. Professor Roswell. Son, if you have a wife or a girlfriend or... Well, go to him. Make love for one last time. None of us have long left. I'm a... I'm a virgin, sir. Oh, excellent. Okay, I've put it off, but I have to ask. If this is a government project, why in the pixelated hell is it being made in a video game company instead of, you know, a government laboratory or a military base or Area 51 or some shit? There's only one guy overseeing the project with no military protection or soldiers of any kind. There's not even a fucking lock on the door. I've seen tighter security at gas station bathrooms. At least the military dudes in Beastmaster 2 made an effort. I don't want to stop Drexel. I want to help him. You're mad. Drexel and I have a deal. I sneak Drexel in here to play the latest games, 
And in return, Drexel gives me the world's digital information. You're responsible for this. Of course. Of course! I'll be able to sell back the data and make a killing. Yes, my plan is flawless. Then the G-Man, for some reason, is able to send Steve into another Sega CD game called Quarterback Attack. Yeah, yeah, this really brings back memories. Really, really traumatic memories I thought I'd killed with alcohol along- HOLY SHIT, MIKE DITKA! AND RED BROWN! Listen, kid, remember to read those defenses carefully. We want to rack up a lot of points today. Go get them! <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing. You're actually watching a movie where Mike Ditka is probably one of the three best actors here. Can we just get a movie about Mike Ditka fighting an evil supercomputer? That'd be fucking awesome. Are you ready to prove what a number one draft pick can do? I'll stand it, rookie! Remember, folks, the fate of mankind somehow rests on this. Either you're part of the solution or you're part of the problem. I've decided you're part of the problem. <laughs> what brought that on? And then there's another fucking market scene. There's like six of these in this fucking game. And now Yasmin is perfectly civil again. Steve shoots a woman on a motorcycle who explodes and then shoots her again, making her explode again. Good thing her motorcycles were conveniently atomized by the explosions. Oh, shit! Well, you know, this is a perfectly believable reaction to realizing you're playing a Sega CD game. Now he's in Corpse Killer, which is just like every other FMV shooter game, except instead of mutants, it's zombies now. And a completely out of place Manic Rastafarian. Welcome to hell, sucker! These bullets kill many zombies. Seriously, for the next half hour, we're just watching Sega CD games that have nothing to do with the main storyline. You know, it's like it's like one of those Godfrey Ho movies where they shoot like 30 minutes of original footage and then try to splice it in with some horrible foreign flick or a ninja movie. But at least Godfrey Ho picked one movie, not five completely unrelated ones, including a football movie with Mike Ditka. Speaking of, dude, fucking throw the ball already? You're making Mike Ditka look bad. You gotta be aware of that first rusher. If he gets you, that's all she wrote. You're out of here, pal. What the hell? I thought she was supposed to be his virtual girlfriend. Why did she keep punching him in the face? Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Oh, really? Prize fighter? This game sucked. <laughs> this scene goes on forever. And besides, I thought this guy was supposed to be some kind of video game wizard, and he completely sucks. Half this movie is watching him fail at video games, and the other half is watching him sweating and making grunting noises in a chair as he fails. Get him a body bag! <laughs> okay, so the first cop goes into the room to stop Elaine, but in a twist, it turns out he's on her side. Probably because he doesn't want to get nuked or see Gary Coleman become president. So much for Steve's contention that the Net Police is the evil empire when both of the guys from the Net Police we've seen are stand-up honorable dudes who both die to protect him. So the cop sacrifices himself and Elaine manages to shoot the G-Man in the confusion and put Steve back into the first game for more mutant blasting. Finally, he faces down with Walter Koenig and his child voice actor and his neck hose. Don't you, don't get Wolf. Why should he care? Wolf is a simulation. Ah, fuck it. Vester dies, and then he gets better, and then he sets off a bomb, and then he's dead again, and somehow this ends up defeating Drexel completely because he lost at a children's video game. Do you remember the birds in the tree? The answer is zero, because the gun's noise made the other 50 birds fly away. I understand everything now. Goodbye, Stephen Hunter. You have been a good playmate. Talisora does this. Unit. Have. Hey, um, you think we should call somebody to, I don't know, take care of the dead bodies of the two cops? Or the government agent we just killed? Or the supercomputer that nearly destroyed the world and I'm not very convinced is actually dead? This movie is without a doubt the laziest, most slapped together piece of shit I've ever seen in my life. 
To recap, this is about a supercomputer who gains sentience and grows so obsessed with crappy video games that he holds the world hostage until some idiot plays them with it. What kind of sense does that make? What lame-ass supervillain creates a virtual world and then forces some hapless dope into playing them until he goes... Wait, wait, hang on. That's an Ankh. That's, that's the symbol of the Avatar, but, but what's it doing? The I was just thinking that I should finish Ultima 9 next, right? I mean, I gotta finish the series eventually, right? God damn, he thought the Sega CD was a pile of shit. That's nothing compared to Ultima 9. It's one of the worst fucking games I ever played in my life. You know, I don't think I've ever been as mad at a video game as I was with Ultima 9. I guess I've been putting it off, right? Well, I guess I can get to it. Um, dude, could you roll the credits for me? Thanks. God, my head.